I think he's on now. All right. Yeah. All right. And let me give another shameless plug. Um, we also uh, have a uh, uh, for African American, well, for Black History Month on Thursday, February 25th from 6 to 7 30 p.m. Uh, we are hosting our Black History Month celebration. Um, so look out for that. And you can RSVP for that event at queensbp.org once again. So that is the website, queensbp.org. Uh, and our keynote speaker for that event is going to be New York State Attorney General Letitia James. So I hope I was able to fill some time as we uh, figured this thing out. Uh, and I now want to, once again, I gave you such a, a nice introduction, <laughs> Captain Kyle. Thank you. Uh, you being here, being in service for 31 years at FDNY. Yeah, flies by. And you still only look 31. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, but thank you for, for what you do uh, for our city. This is such an important subject. I, I don't have to tell residents of Queens how many people we've lost um, to fires uh, over the course. And we, I mean, there have been some really, I, I remember, I think maybe a year or two a, uh, ago, we, we lost some children to a fire. And it's always mm. heartbreaking when we have to show up to those scenes and to, to work with those families. So really oh, urge yeah. everybody to take advantage of the information that's shared um, this evening and also to make sure you're, you're checking your, your uh, fire alarms to make sure you, you have batteries. But I know he's gonna get into that, so I'm not gonna steal your thunder, but wanna thank you hey. once again for joining us. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay, so everyone, can, you can hear me, right? Okay. All right, so um, I'd like to get into uh, some very important information about fire safety. Um, fires were actually down 5% in 2020 versus 2019. We had uh, 63 fire deaths throughout the city as opposed to 66 the year before, but that's uh, still 66 too many. But we're trying our very best. And even with the pandemic, we're able to reach people virtually and through our website, you can see the website behind me, uh, fdnysmart.org, tons of information there, uh, virtual tours of the firehouse, age appropriate stuff for uh, pre-K and all school grades, uh, seniors alike. But um, it's, uh, it's still, you know, 60, 66 fire deaths is still too many. So we're trying to cut into that. We have a sound the alarm program where we're trying to get every every new yorker with a working smoke detector we've found that you're 70 percent more likely to die in a fire without a working smoke detector so we were able to secure a a, a grant from department of homeland security with a partnership with red cross where we have installation and we're supplying as many detectors as you need I'll provide a link afterwards, but that is the key to saving lives is with early detection. Um, I'll get into that again later. I just wanna get into now some of the most common causes of fires. The most common place a fire starts and where people get burned is always the kitchen. Um, and it all has to do with unattended cooking. We're multitasking. We're trying to do a lot of things at once. We're cooking on high flames because we're in a rush. Uh, we're taking phone calls, we're we got killed children in the bath, we're homeschooling, it's just too much. So I'm just reminding everybody of the importance of when you've got something on the cooktop, especially if you're frying with hot oil, that you don't get too far from the kitchen, okay? Uh, it's really important. Another thing too now, think about during the pandemic, school-age children that are normally being fed by the school cafeteria are fending for themselves. So these kids are getting creative. They're YouTubing some uh, elaborate recipes and all of a sudden they're a Chef Ramsay in the kitchen. But do we take time to talk to kids about basic kitchen safety? Do they know you can't put tin foil in the microwave? Uh, do you know that you can't stick the fork in the toaster oven when the English muffin doesn't pop out without unplugging it first? Um, keeping the cooktop area clear of paper towels, dish rags, um, pot holders. We're finding that especially the newer, uh, um, the newer electric ranges 
have a higher incidence of fire because sometimes they're confused for additional counter space in small, in small apartments. People tend to put things on the glass surface that they're not using. And it's very easy for the heat to communicate to that different area of the stove top. Or sometimes you're not sure which, which, uh, which stove top unit is on during the new convection oven. So to remind the kids about basic kitchen safety, remind the adults that they can't wander too far away when they've been involved with an elaborate meal. If you do come back to the kitchen and something's gotten a little out of hand, I remind you that the best thing to do with a gloved hand is to put, is to smother it with a tight fitting lid. You can see me, I'll demonstrate quite simply, but you gotta have a corresponding lid. I bet you if you checked a lot of your cabinets right now and your cookware, you may not find a corresponding lid. But I'll remind you that if you are frying, deep frying in oil, it's very good to have the lid nearby, even if your recipe doesn't call for it. Because if you do come back and that's overheated and it's smoking and it's flaming with a gloved hand, turn the burner off and smother it. That's your number one. Another very good little tip is old fashioned almond hammer baking soda is a very similar compound that's inside a fire extinguisher. Sodium bicarbonate is sometimes what's in a fire extinguisher, all right? So little mini fire extinguisher, try to find it in this handy shaker bottle if you can. But um, the only difference in the fire extinguisher really is that there's some nitrogen gas added in here that allows this to shoot out under pressure about six feet when you pull the trigger. But other than that, mini fire extinguisher, so keep that nearby. If you don't have that, lid that fits you can come over this and this is will put the fire out okay you never want to put water on an oil fire um be careful you, you just leave this off a part of the stove that's not hot don't try to walk outside with a hot pan it's very likely that heat may transfer through the glove to your hand and if you drop that you've got a bigger problem on your hands okay um so kitchen Fires, people get burned a lot too in kitchens uh, because uh, they don't wear, they wear loose fitting clothing, especially if you got a big meal, you're cooking for a lot of people. If you got all four burners going on cooktop at once, if you're reaching to the back burners, if you have loose fitting clothing, sometimes it's a common way to, to catch fire with your clothes or getting burned. So Please be careful in and around the kitchen. Moving right along now to another common fire, which is really, unfortunately, the deadliest fire is, involves smoking. Um, smoking and candles. Smoking is an addiction. People that smoke need it first thing in the morning, last thing before they go to bed. Very dangerous place to smoke, but that's where we find a lot of uh, you know, uh, fire fatalities where it's determined that it was smoking is in and around the bedroom. Um, all it takes is a little bit, a, a little ash to just set in the fibers of that mattress. And you've got a very, very fast moving fire. Um, the thing with fire is people have to understand is how fast it moves. If you talk to people that survived and escaped the fire, they'll tell you about how fast that it traveled. A fire doubles in size every one minute. You think about that, right? Fire may start real small, but in a couple of minutes, you've got a really, really big, fast moving fire. And what's burning nowadays is, is everything is plastic. If you look around your, an apartment now, 90% of what's in there is plastic. It's not like 20 years ago when your TV was in a wooden cabinet and when your, your mattress was filled with cotton. Your mattress is filled now with a, a polycarbonate um, fiberglass. Your TV is all plastic and when Plastic burns. It's a carbon rich um, compound. So it burns hot, it burns fast, and the smoke is thick, toxic black smoke. It's not like 20 years ago, firefighters, if you were tough enough, they called them smoke eaters, where they'd, you know, they'd walk through fire, they'd grab you and carry you out. But now nobody, nobody can survive. Uh, more than one or two breaths of what's the smoke off what's burning now. And the smoke actually becomes flammable. That's how toxic it is. That's what we call a flashover, is when a room gets hot enough, 
the smoke actually burns. That's because what's burning is carbon rich or plastic materials. So very, very dangerous about how fast moving it is. It's so important to have early detection. Your plan can't be to outrun it or walk through it. You have to get an early detection through a smoke detector. Um, it's just so important. So getting back to the cigarettes, just please be careful in and around anybody that's smoking, that they safeguard their ashes and their ashtrays, that you don't dump the ashtray into a paper waste basket at night. You don't flick a cigarette butt out the porch window where it lands in some leaves and communicates up the side of the house. Um, if you're smoking, you've got matches and you've got lighters in the house. And when the kids go visit grandma or whoever, and they get curious as kids will be, they're going to look for a match or a lighter and they're going to play. And uh, I don't have to tell you any more about that, about uh, how often fires start that way. So please be careful with the, with the cigarettes, understand the dangers of it. When I talk about cigarettes, I talk about candles because a very another high incidence of fire, uh, Candles come in all different shapes and sizes. The fire department loves the battery operated candle. Um, I realize it doesn't have quite the same ambiance, but it does give off a nice glow. Um, I'm pushing everybody to get an oil diffuser, to give off a nice aroma and a relaxing scent if that's what you're looking for your candle to do, but it's a nice substitute. But if you if you're still, you know, hooked on burning a candle, I urge you to get one that won't tip over. Something like this that has a wide base. Try to avoid those long stem candles, especially around Hanukkah. They use, Hanukkah is like a long skinny candle that tips over very easily. Um, what's better than this is a candle that's inside a glass jar. Um, it won't tip over. The flame isn't exposed like this one is. It's inside the glass jar. And when you're done, you could just put the lid on it and the fire goes out. And that's a good way to illustrate the fire triangle. If you think about a candle in a glass jar, right? Fire th needs three things to sustain itself. It needs fuel, a heat source, and air. When you take away the air, fire goes out. Just as you would put the lid on the candle, you take away the oxygen, the fire goes out. Fire is like a living, breathing thing. It's always seeking fresh air. It's seeking an area of low pressure, an area of least resistance, and that's the way it travels. So if you could think about how fire needs air, we can help ourselves by limiting the air, and that has to do with closing the door. It's so important we launched a close your door campaign because if you understood the importance of that and how much better it is for you and safer and even the fire department to contain and extinguish a fire, if it can be contained to one room. If you forget to close the bedroom door, if the fire is in the mattress or in the bedroom, if you have the bedroom doors left open, that fire is gonna consume all of the fuel in that room. And now it's out the door in the hallway and down to the next room. Whereas if you close that door, we can contain it there. You'll buy your family valuable time to escape. Same thing when you leave the apartment. If you have the wherewithal to close the apartment door behind you, you're gonna prevent that hallway from, from filling up with smoke which people need that share that floor with you to evacuate. So it's very important to understand that concept and it's so important to uh, remember to close the door. And really it all comes down to remaining calm. It doesn't matter how big, or strong or smart you are. The key to escaping a fire is remaining calm, right? And it doesn't really matter how big or smart you are. Remaining calm is the key. How do you remain calm? I think the best way is to have a plan and to have early detection is the best way to remain calm. Talk about, talk about a fire drill with your family. Talk about having two ways out, right? If you open that door to the, to the common hallway and it's, uh, it's filled with smoke because maybe the fire was next door, You've got to close that door. Now you got to go to your second exit, which might be the fire escape. Um, if you live in a private house, you've got a fire in the kitchen. Now it's coming up the stairs and down the bedroom hallway. 
you may not be able to get down the stairs out the front door. You may have to go to your second option, which may be a window onto a setback or onto a roof or anywhere just to a window. The fire department in New York is the best in the world. I'm proud to say we have a four minute response time. If you get yourself to a window, I, I promise you that we'll, we'll find you. But uh, you, uh, you really want that, that plan in place. It'll help you in the middle of that, when you hear those beeps to say, okay, it's go time, right? And, and go through this once a month, right? These newer detectors now are, are very good. We're not asking you to change the batteries anymore twice a year. These have a 10 year sealed lithium battery, but we still are asking you to test it once a month. You just have to press and hold this button in the middle, let it run through its cycle of beeps and let everyone in the family get familiar with what that sound means, okay? You don't wanna be confusing those beeps with anything else. You don't want people saying, uh, did somebody leave the refrigerator door open or whose phone battery is low? No, this is unmistakable. And this is, okay, we've got a situation and let's calmly, okay, get up and get out. And please don't go back in. Um, when you get out, you stay out. There's some different evacuation plans uh, specific to what type of building you live in. If you live in a fireproof multiple dwelling, a tall building that has no fire escapes in case you're not sure what that is, um, that building won't burn structurally. Only the contents burn, right? That building is built of all cement, concrete, steel, glass, okay? Fire doesn't spread from one floor to another. Fire doesn't spread from one apartment to another. If the fire is not in your apartment, you should shelter in place. That means stay put, okay? The last thing you wanna do is panic and put yourself in a smoke-filled hallway, a smoke-filled stairwell, or an elevator when you are perfectly safe staying in your apartment, okay? But that all has to do with remaining calm, okay? Uh, that's for a fireproof building that won't burn. Uh, if you live in a non-fireproof multiple dwelling, a building that uh, may look like it's brick, it's brick on the outside, but underneath the brick is, is wood and it is combustible. Fire will spread from one apartment to another and from one floor to another. You should evacuate if there's a fire anywhere in your building, okay? And you'd have to talk about two ways out. Make sure your fire escape is clear of anything that, that's in its way and the door, the window to the fire escape opens and stays open, that you can remove the screen, that there's not an air conditioner in that window. These are all things you wanna find out beforehand, not when you've got a emergency situation on your hands. And uh, the same thing with the private homes, okay? You get out, you stay out, you go to your safe meeting place that you discuss with your family, especially with the children. The children are much more likely to be uh, persuaded to go with a, with a friendly neighbor who thinks that he or she is, uh, is providing a valuable service by safeguarding the child. But when mom or dad go to the safe meeting place and the kids are not there, that's when tragic tragedy strikes because you know, mom and dad, they go back into the house looking for the kids and they didn't know that they were safe with the neighbor. So that's very important that you discuss a safe meeting place with the family. Um, lastly, the, uh, the next most common fire has to do with electrical fires, um, especially around the holidays, really around the holidays. It's funny, all fires go up. Um, the cooking fires go up, right? The candle fires go up. The electrical fires go up, right? Because we're using a lot more electricity. We're decorating the house for, uh, for holidays. So a little bit about electrical, electricity, okay? Um, extension cords are really only designed for temporary use. I know that's surprising for you to hear, but they should definitely never be used in accordance with an appliance, okay? An appliance is simply anything that gets hot or cold. For instance, a blow dryer, a curling iron, a toaster oven, a microwave, an air conditioner, a refrigerator, a space heater, okay? These things have compressors and thermostats. They get hot, they get cold. 
They call for electricity. And why is heat up? Why is cool down? Why is expand? Why is contract? It's an alternating current. So it's not meant to flow through an extension cord. I don't care how thick it is. Any appliance should be plugged directly into a wall outlet and preferably the only thing in that, in that receptacle. If you can, people complain, well, I don't have that many outlets. My answer is to call a licensed electrician and have additional outlets installed where you may need them. I know it's not a great answer, but we have to avoid using extension cords for these purposes. Power strips, okay, really? They don't give you more power, all right? They don't change the amperage in your circuit breaker. It's a convenience item that's meant to be in and around the, uh, the uh, television or the computer. We have had, you have multiple things that need to be plugged in like a router, a modem, a cable box, an Alexa, uh, the TV, the VCR, whatever you may have, okay? It's designed there to protect your expensive electronic equipment. Um, you can use it in and around next to the bed for your uh, table lamp, your alarm clock, your phone charger, stuff like that is okay. But you don't want to overload it. Um, you want to stick to stuff that has a UL label. If you can look for that, it's been tried and tested. Um, anytime you smell something electrical burning or see a spark around an outlet, you must call 911 immediately. Never ignore that. Don't go to bed with that. Um, very often we'll come back hours later. And the fire department has like a thermal imaging camera that lets us detect heat behind the wall. And many times you've got fire in the wall. And if you fires in the wall, it's very likely in the attic and across the ceiling. And it's it's a big problem. Now you use a, you will lose a lot of personal property and you'll have a lot of fire damage because we ignored a uh, spark around an outlet. So please call nine one one and uh, and have a plan and. Back to the detectors, really, we're relying on this for a dual purpose. And when we come, when you call 1877 Red Cross, and I'm going to provide a link at the end of this in the chat, um, we will put you on a schedule and you will have a window of opportunity, a, a, maybe a two, three, four hour window on any day you like during the week. And we'll come out and assess how many you need. If you need two, you'll get two. You need eight, you'll get eight. Um, there's no charge. Uh, we installed them and we follow uh, safety protocols that were set for uh, the COVID. Everything's um, up to guidelines. And we'll put them where you need them. We'll put combination smoke and CO on every floor. Now, the CO is important. You're really relying on this entirely. Uh, you will. Uh, relying entirely on the detector to pick up carbon monoxide. It's a deadly, um, odorless, colorless, tasteless gas. Um, it can accumulate from a faulty hot water heater, a uh, faulty burner, faulty stove. You could have it, especially in the winter, if you got cars idling in underground, underground garages, a garage that's underneath the house. You could be in a car where the tailpipe is still covered with snow and ice. We've had a lot of snow and ice lately and it builds up. You may get a headache, you may not. People fall asleep and they just don't wake up. That's how scary it is. Um, we had a deadly incident a couple of weeks ago in Brooklyn, two brothers lost their lives from carbon monoxide poisoning. So um, please, and understand now the difference too. This, these detectors will beep. When you cycle through your test, you will hear two sets of beeps. Beep, 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 twice indicate smoke. There's a pause and you'll hear four rapid beeps will indicate carbon monoxide. You don't want to confuse the, the two, okay? Four rapid beeps is carbon monoxide. And you should evacuate, call 911, and we'll come in and confirm those readings and, uh, and locate the source as best we can. And it can happen anywhere, really. You could be, uh, I know we're out, we're not out and about much in restaurants or public assemblies, but when we do get back to normal, be careful that it can happen anywhere. And if you're suddenly out of the blue, feeling lightheaded, um, ask somebody you're with. If multiple people are having similar symptoms, it's very likely you have a carbon monoxide leak where you are. Um, 
So please um, get the detectors. 1877 Red Cross. We have about 12 to 1600 detectors that we are installing a month. Um, we're not looking for anything else. Don't hesitate to call. There's nobody looking for anything else in the apartment just to get everybody safe. Um, in Queens, we've got a primary area. Um, zip codes listed right now as 11434, 11436, 11413, 11372. That's a primary areas based on fire incidents in the past that we're trying to uh, really do a community outreach to. But anybody in the city can get one and get on the get on the list if they if they dial that number. Um, I'm going to close there. Try to keep it in a timely fashion. We hit we hit on a lot of important topics. Uh, I can elaborate or add um, to anything you'd like when we open it up now to Q and A. So if I can turn it back over to the host of this webinar, I will. And Thank while you, we're Captain. while we're chatting, I'll try to add that link. Thank you, Captain Colabella. So now we will open up the floor for Q&A. And we have one question from an anonymous attendee asking, is there a special application for CEC slash CCHS borough appointee? And how do they apply for that? I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't know. I have to be honest. I don't know. Um, I will make a note of it. And if I could get back to you in some way, I have a phone number on my, uh, my invitation to this webinar and I will get back to you on that. I apologize. Thank you for, for answering. Now I would like to let the participants on this webinar know that you can feel free to unmute your mic so that you can ask any questions if you did not put them in the Q&A box. You can also feel free to raise your hand in the, in the Q&A as well, in the chat. I'm gonna to try to go and share this link now, okay? Yes. Okay, so uh, the anonymous attendee said that was for the borough president. So uh, thank you. So uh, assuming, okay, so Ronald Britt has a question. I will unmute your mic, Ronald. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, thank you for uh... Uh, taking my question here. Uh, my question is along the lines of, is there a, uh, a youth program with the FDNY that our teenagers can get involved with that you know of? Uh, yes, there is. There is a cadet program um, that, uh, that you can get involved with. Unfortunately, I don't have my uh, inform further information on that, but to answer your question with a resounding yes, there is. I see them all the time at the uh, Fort Totten where they're training and they look like they're high school age kids and they have FDMY youth. Okay. Captain Corbella, if you would like, you could, um, your office could share that information with our office and we can follow, follow up with Ronald with that information. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any more questions? If anyone would like to raise their hand. Okay, assuming we don't have, we have no more questions. I believe we can wrap up now, Captain Colabella. Okay, yeah. I was just trying. I was just trying to share that link. I might. I might need a. I need a minute. Um, if I could just go over there. All right. Okay. 
FDNY, um, Latish Williams is on. Good evening, everyone. Latisha Williams, Queensboro Manager for FDNY Community Affairs. Um, with regards to the youth inquiry, if you, I put in the chat my email address to the gentleman who um, would like to know about youth programming. Um, just please send me an email and then I can connect with you there and further assist you with any other uh, questions you may have. Thank you, Tish. You're very welcome. Are there any other questions that our attendees would like to ask? Okay, assuming there are no further questions, uh, Captain Colabella, if once you finish sharing the information in the chat, if you would like to give any final remarks. Yeah. Um, I would just uh, urge everybody to please reach out to your family and bring this topic up. It can't be, it really has much more about. I don't mean to cut you off. We have someone that has a question. They just okay, sure. Okay. Sylvia, if you could unmute your mic. Oh, great. Because of the chatting, you know, I was trying to chat in the, trying to type into the, um, the chat, chat box while you guys close out. Yes, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know, how is it that we're able to obtain um, the carbon monoxides in the fire alarms? Are they giving that out at all? Um, or that's, I know they usually give them out in like around October, but I know due to the COVID and, you know, not having in-person events that are limited, are they able to email, you know, send it to us by mail or is there like well, a quick drop pickup, you know, somewhere? Uh, well, no, the, the, uh, what we were doing in, in October was like usually the uh, change, change your clock, change your battery campaign where we were actually giving oh. out the nine volt batteries, but the, the detectors now um, we're working with Red Cross, a partnership with Red Cross, where we're uh, giving out the number uh, 1877 Red Cross. And there is a, a, an automated system that, that will set up and schedule a convenient time for you. And we will install and provide at no cost. Um, we do have some community outreach where we have been uh, tabling with uh, we where we have detectives that we're giving out. They're usually um, in areas where there was a recent fatal fire. We just uh, try to do a community outreach in those areas. But uh, we're really we're really trying to reach everybody through this Save the Alarm program, where we're trying to get everybody in New York with a working smoke detector or even possibly an upgrade. If you still have the old detector where you're changing a nine volt battery would like you to sign up and get the new detectors that have not only a 10 year seal lithium battery, they also have a much better detection system where they're cutting out nuisance alarms. Because oh, wow. Sometimes we, we find that like in and around the kitchen when people, you know, overcook or sometimes it doesn't take much to set the alarm off and people drop the alarm, drop the battery till they get through the meal and they very often forget to reinstall it. You know, so what the fire department has actually gone to fires where we see detectors, working detectors, but where the battery was removed and dropped out. So that's another advantage of uh, calling 1877 Red Cross and signing up for a, a new detector or an upgraded detector. Uh, uh, so it'll be upgraded because I still have the one with the nine volt battery. Yeah, call them, call them, call them, get on the schedule. And like I said, we'll be very happy to come out and assess your uh, house or apartment and install uh, as many as you need in all the right places. Awesome. And then what are they called again? Um, they're called, uh, well, 
smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, you gave a fancy wording to it. I don't know. Um... Uh, well, say, save the alarm. <laughs> Well, save the alarm is a, a sound the alarm. Sound the alarm is a program. Maybe okay. uh, the fancy word I said was a lithium battery. Maybe yes, yes. We, okay, that's the type of battery. It's it's good for ten years. Okay. So uh, you'll never change it. Oh, good. Okay, good. I'll I'll give them a call. Is there a website? Yeah, Red Cross. Red Cross has the website. I'm still trying to share this link where it's the form. I'm going to try now. I know for Fabrizio Caro, our uh, community affairs director, uh, walked me through this. And for some reason, I'm having a little bit of a problem. Maybe uh, Latish could help me. I would love Thank that. Thank you so much for the info. But I'll call them, you know, um, but okay. I don't usually... If you could sign up online, it's a little bit easier. Red Cross has it on their website, but I, sh I was supposed to be able to share this link. Hi, good evening. This is Letitia Williams again from FDNY Community Affairs. Everyone that is on this call who is interested in obtaining the link, I have previously entered my email address. What you can do is you can send me an email and follow up with me so that I can provide you with the correct email link so that we can get you scheduled for the smoke alarms and the detectors. Okay, and um, I, I had joined in like 10 minutes ago. Can you, you send that out? Oh, okay, so I will um, verbalize my email address. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Thank you so much. No problem. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. It is L E hyphen T I S dot Williams at with an S? I'm sorry. Williams with an S. Ending with an Williams? S. Yes, ending with an S. Okay. At F D N Y dot N Y C dot gov okay awesome okay so that it is ellen also L, you the, i will also send you Letitia's email in the chat privately oh great thank you oh, okay awesome okay and again my apologies for the technical issues and for the delay with the links um we're trying to you know these things are temperamental but we're trying to get it together for you guys Thank you, thank you, thank okay. you. Awesome. I'm Are sorry. there any more questions? Um, just to backtrack, I would like to answer the anonymous caller's question uh, before about the appointment. And if, you can, if you're still on the call, you can email our office to Monica Gutierrez at education at queensbp.org. Again, that is education at queensbp.org. And you can address the email to Monica Gutierrez. Does anyone else have any further questions before we wrap up? You can raise your hand or you can unmute your mic. Okay, I we have a hand raised. Go ahead, Makund, Makund. I see your hand is raised. You can ask your question. Just unmute your mic. Can you put your email on the chat box? What, whose email? Just now say no, that it is a L E T I S. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Latish Williams? Yeah. Can you just put it on the. Yes, I'll share it with, with all attendees. Okay. Also, if you uh, if I could add to another good resource is um, I'd like to share the email address. If anybody belongs to a, a church group or any type of organization where they would like to schedule a virtual um, 
you know, lecture similar to the one that I just gave, um, you can schedule through, and this is the, uh, the web, the uh, email is uh, fire safety admin at fdny.nyc.gov. And um, you'd be able to uh, request and schedule a fire safety education lecture similar to this. Thank you, Captain Colabella. I also share that information in the chat. Okay. Thank you. I would like to schedule one. I have an, um, a nonprofit organization. So that, that'll be something of interest. But it's, mm. it's, it's, for, it's an organization of young girls and women of all ages. So I, you know, just do a fire safety. Absolutely. We'll be, we'll be happy to, more than happy to. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Does anyone have any further questions? Any more questions? Yeah. Okay, Captain Colabella, uh, I think we're ready to wrap up. Okay, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Please stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And share share the information. Yes, yes, I will. I mean, Thank fire you. safety is it is it is it misspelled with an A or is just that's the email? Uh, fire safety admin, fire safety admin. Right, because I see F I R E S F E T Y, or is it S A F E? Well, maybe I don't I don't know if it's the system is in, interpreting everything like with a spell check. Oh, okay. Fire safety, it's F-I-R-E-S-A-F-E-T-Y-A-D-M-I-N at fdny.nyc.gov. Okay, I thought so, because it's, it's missing the A in safe, <laughs> but okay. Check now. All right, great. Thank you. I'll send that email in the morning. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.